Check one, two. Go! Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. Michael Quarles with Podcast 102. Today, we have the five questions sent in by investors like yourself who had a question, needed an answer. And remember, if you have a question, send it to support at bsffacademy.com. Here we go. Question number one, when picking zip codes to market to, should you rule out small or rural zip codes? Absolutely. Yeah, anything that um, you can't get real good comps on, um, I would rule out. I would want to stay in the, the larger cities. From my perspective, as we're traveling across the country, we're looking for cities that have a population base of 200,000, somewhat confined, and that they're in the bell curves. Or, so they're on the bell curve, they're, they're still going up and um, not going up more than 50% of what they were in 2007, 2008. Question number two, I'm gonna start cold calling to find leads. Where should I start? Great question. There are four opportunities for you. Two of them are cold. So um, automobile ads in the magazines and Craigslist, that kind of thing, because they want you to call them. Don't call them saying, hey, I, I, I know you have a car to sell, but you have a house to sell too, kind of thing. Just go right into the house, cold call. And the other one is um, garage sales that are advertising. And then the other two, which could be a little bit better, but they're not going to be as plentiful, is for sale by owners that are advertising on some of the sites out there or, or for sale signs in the front yard. If it's a for sale sign in the front yard, I wouldn't call them. i just go knock on the door, try to buy a house. And then um, active for rent. So those are, those are landlords that have a vacancy who are advertising some way, somewhere. And there's rental magazines and there's newspapers for those kinds of things. And remember, the cold call script's real easy. It's, hi, my name is Michael Quarles with I Buy Houses. We're looking for three and four bedroom homes in your neighborhood. I was just wondering, who do you think, who do you know that's moving? No one, terrific. Go to the next call. 16 calls an hour you're, um, is all you can do. If you, you call for and you get 100 people, you're going to get an appointment. If you get nine appointments, you're going to buy a house. So great stuff. Question number three, are there any specific rules or guidelines that you should keep in mind when choosing a website URL? Absolutely. Um, try to make it as friendly to um, the keywords that someone would type in. So you can go to Google and play around with it. You can type in um, I buy houses and kind of get all of the keywords around it because you can't get ibuyhouses.com, that's taken. But you can get I buy houses fast, I buy houses cash, I buy houses cash fast, those kinds of that stuff. What I like a lot is I buy houses in your area. So I buy houses um, AZ for Arizona. I buy houses TX for Texas. I, I buy houses in Texas, so you can go in Texas. Things that people would commonly use in the search term. So, and they, that would make sense. Question number four. I was, I'm expecting a sizable amount of money from a relative that would allow me to acquire a property that I have under contract and another that I'm hoping to get under contract. The terms of the loan have yet to be determined and my relative, his attorney, who is drawing up the loan, is not responding to my calls. Do I proceed? Do I go through with the inspections tomorrow, put down a $5,000 deposit, and hope the terms will settle by the end of June, the expected close date? Or do I wait until the loan is established, which most likely will result in me losing these properties? Well, it's, it really depends on how well you, you know your relative. And um, I think in this case, because I know who, who wrote this, I think you absolutely fall forward um, as fast as you can. Understanding that you know you have contingencies for your $5,000 deposit and you can make a loan contingency out of it, no big deal. And um, so you don't lose that, but yeah, fall forward. I, I, you know, your relative's going to, to fall forward. He's just doing his due diligence, no big deal. Question number five. I've been negotiating with a seller for a couple of weeks and have finally have come to terms with the signed contract. I'm buying the home for 45,000 and it's worth 90. Congrats. There is a renter in the property paying $700 a month and has two years left on the lease. Would you keep the home as a rental or sell in two years? Pay out, pay to get the renter out to leave this and sell the house, try and sell the house with the renter there. What is the best exit strategy? What would you do? Um, Probably wouldn't have bought the house in the first place, although you have $45,000 worth of equity. I get it. Um, is $700 going to cover um, everything you need it to cover? Um, that would be, I'd have to look at that to see. Boy, that $45,000, $700, that seems awfully high. My, my, my recapture rate's a lot lower than that. So 
it, this one's not tickling me, my, my funny bone here, really well. Um, but I like the 45000 cash I, I'm in equity. I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, it really depends on what, what the 45000 is going to cost you, you know, 10%. That's 4500 a year. That's less than 400 bucks. Then you have your property taxes, insurance, you got your vacancy factor, repair factor. So you're going you're gonna to be a wash on that seven. Um, two years is a long time. Uh, in two years, that property could be worth twice as much as it is now, but it could also be worth half as much as it is now. So, um, yeah, I kicked the deal. I just decided, kick the deal. Or, or here, let, let's do this. Let's put it under contract and sell it to somebody. They think that's the alternative. Sell it to somebody who wants a rental, knowing that it's renter, renter occupied already. But, but confirm that the $700 a month is um, what market standard is. So if the houses around it are written for $700, and um, then you'll be fine because you know there are a lot of people that want property that way. And um, this one might be the only time that I could see a ref uh, an assignment fee uh, being paid to somebody. Yuck. Did I say assignment fee? Yuck, 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 yuck. I got to go wash my mouth. That was so. I'm just kidding for all, those you, all of you guys that do wholesaling and assigning. I don't think it's really yucky. Well, I do, but not really solely yucky that I have to wash my mouth out with soap, but it, you get the point. Hey, I got an announcement today. Uh-oh, spiked the mic there. Um, over at Yellow Letters, and I'm just so proud of those guys over there. And I just think um, good stuff is happening for them. You know, that, that company is doing uh, some amazing, 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 amazing things. And um, it's just on the on the verge of just just blowing up hopefully not literally um but figuratively and um they're getting in today get this guys now it's not you know in the business of buying houses who cares but they're getting in today a machine being delivered right now it's i can hear them you know with the cranes and stuff delivering it but i you know when i started yellow letters i would have never ever ever imagined because i'm a house buyer i mean i love dirt i don't like paper and ink. So when I started Yellow Letters, I would have never thought it would have gotten to the size that it's gotten to. I mean, it was just, it was just a fluke. You know, all I did was systemize it like I systemized my house buying business and voila, there it is. There's a successful business and should have, should have known all along that if you, if you just follow the systems and, and put normal people in extraordinary systems, you're going to have extraordinary results. But this piece of equipment today that they're delivering is it cost me 600 and thirty thousand dollars just for the equipment and i'm going to spend another sixty thousand dollars installing it so i'm going to have almost seven hundred thousand dollars uh for just this one printer now i got a lot of printers back there so i mean it's just craziness but it's just a friggin awesome but it does like four and a half million pieces of paper a month which i just it's just amazing to me you know, in the print business, and not to get real worried about the print business, I know you guys want to talk about real estate, but it's 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 odd because in real estate we're dealing with average ticket prices from that number of you know twenty eight thousand dollars, thousand dollars, kind of twenty eight thousand. Say it again. In the ink and paper business and print business, we multiply the fourth decimal point. So when we order stuff, we're, we're ordering it with four decimal points out there instead of like, just like, instead of one penny, like a fraction of one penny. It is just amazing world. And um, I'm so, I'm so blessed that, that um, we systemize that thing and we have great people running it. You know, my sales team over there, Norma and the girls, uh, they're just, they're friggin' outstanding. I've got graphics guys that just blow me away on how talented they are graphically. And um, my production people just get it done. I mean, it's just, they just get it done. And if you were to see it, and I invite anybody that wants to come down and see it, um, well, let me not invite anybody because sometimes that everybody shows up what, one day. And so if you want to come down and see it, call us first. Um, but the, it's just like systems, just it, a beautiful orchestra of just playing systems. And I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm sorry, I'm getting off real estate topic, but, um, and as you guys know, my coaching program's um, closed. I, I appreciate everybody that has hired me over the last year. And we'll, of course, we'll continue this coming year, um, fulfilling our obligation to you and making sure you buy some houses. 
Um, I appreciate that. I just I really do, really, 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 really do like doing what I'm doing for you folks. And, um, you know, there's this, I don't know if you guys know anything about cancer. I don't. I, um, my, my grandma died of cancer a long, long, long time ago, but I was kind of too young to understand it. Uh, she died 72 years old smoking cigarettes. Um, and I think she was probably in bed smoking a cigarette when she decided to go. But there's a, there's, there's, there's a cancer walk happening all across the country. I think it's called Avon 29, or no, Avon39.org. And there was, this, there was this friend of a friend kind of thing, and, and um, she wasn't wanting to go in this cancer walk. And you had, the whole concept of it is you walk for 39 miles. Now, guys and gals, if, if I walk to the refrigerator and back, that's a long way. 39 miles, I'm not sure. But, you know, if I've got cancer or if I, if I know someone who has cancer and I can help them, you know, grow and be in somewhat peace and hopefully find a cure for this horrible disease, and I can raise money doing that, I think that's a pretty good thing. So she, um, she entered this race, you know, her cancer is not doing too good for her and to, to walk 39 miles and so i heard that you know that she needed a you know she had to raise 1800 bucks so um i got on there and i tried to do it anonymously of course you know that never happens i guess so i donated to her 1800 and i didn't and i'd invite each of each of you guys that are listening to my podcasts if you got a spare you know a couple bucks something um jump on that jump on that site and um contribute to to these these ladies and um man it, they're doing the best they can and they want to help they want to help themselves and those that are going to come later and I, I think that's a pretty cool just a pretty cool action of of being a human being knowing that um what you have is 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 not good but yet you are still going to put yourself out there for somebody that's coming later and um, so if you have a couple extra bucks, it's avon39.org. Um, if you know someone that's doing the walk and they have them all over the country, support someone. If you don't know anybody, you know, so donate. Um, whatever cause it is, you know, help some, help your neighbor, help. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that it'll come back to you and um, in, in truckloads. And if nothing else, it makes you feel real wonderful and tingly inside. And... Um, so go do something for someone today, okay? Until tomorrow, talk to you then. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.